Hey guys, in today's tip, I want to show you a little trick for being able to replicate the style that another site uses for something cool. So let's say, for example, I went to gossipcop.com. It's not the most impressive site, but I check it out sometimes for celebrity news. And I noticed when I scroll down the page, you get this little toaster pop up encouraging you to sign up for their newsletter and I really like that and I'd like to incorporate that at your Tango. And so I know that Gigia, a tool that we're using that gives you that kind of functionality but with very very basic formatting offers something like this and I know that we have the ability to use custom CSS to format the toaster and this little thing here is called a toaster I guess because it pops up. Very clever huh? So I like the formatting here. I mean, it's very basic, very, very basic, but I like the simplicity of it. And so I thought, well, let me see their CSS and see if we could take it and kind of improve on it, and, uh, but at least have a jumping off point. So if you right click on it in Chrome, this only works in Chrome, you have the option to inspect element. And that's gonna pull up this little window down here and there are just so many awesome things you can do with this, but I'm just going to focus on CSS for now. So if you look in this right column here, you'll see this Styles tab, and it automatically is selected as soon as you select Inspect Elements. And this isn't showing you all of the styles for the entire site. It's specifically showing you styles from various style sheets that are impacting this element that I've selected. So if you look over here, you can see the HTML and you can see when I hover over this, you can see it highlighted here. So this does confirm I'm in the right place. Sometimes I'll move up just to make sure I'm in the right place. So this is just probably highlighting the whole footer. If it's not showing in your view, you can right click and choose scroll into view. And now if I hover over the footer, you'll see, but I don't want the whole footer. I specifically want this here. And this was already selected for me when I chose Inspect Element. So over here, we have all of the styles that are applied to this little toaster here. And you could change any of these. So for example, if I click in here and either change this value, so I could just type in 500 pixels and hit Tab, and you can see that it makes it wider. I can press Command or Control Z to undo that change. Or I could click in here and just use my arrow keys to increment it, which is pretty cool. I'll just hit Escape so that that change doesn't take effect. And I can also change this value so you'll see it update live. Now obviously, I'm not touching anything on their site these changes are only taking effect in my browser. And so if I refresh this page up here, all of my changes will disappear. So now, one thing I noticed, and I'm just gonna hit escape, is I thought, well, this is kind of curious. So this background here, instead of using background color, they're using an image. And if I hover over this, you'll actually see a preview of the image, which is really cool. I can also right click and choose open link in new tab. And now you can see the image. And I could even drag this into Photoshop if I wanted to modify it. But let's say that we wanted to change this. But before I do that, I wanna show you something cool because I want you to see the before and after. So if I click on this link here, notice the Elements tab is going to change to the Sources tab. And this is the CSS. This right here, this is the CSS. And take note here that it says Background and then the URL, just like we saw. Now if I click back to Elements, I still have this selected. I don't have to reselect it. And if I click in here, and I just use my right arrow to get to the end. If I put a hyphen, you'll see all of these autocomplete options. And if I just start typing in color, then I can just hit the tab key and it will select it. Now what I can do is I can just put in the color. So I could just put, 
and that will change it to black. Or I could open that image tab back up. Uh, let's And with the web developer toolbar, I could go in here, display color picker, and if I click on this, you'll see the exact hex color down here. And I can just copy and paste that in here. So I can set the background color, hit tab, and put in the pound sign and that value. And now I've changed it from an image to a background color. And watch what happens when I now click on this link. This has changed from image to background color. The value of this is that I can change whatever I want, customize this however I want. I could change the font family to Helvetica. I could change the font size. I could bump it up to 16 pixels. You know, or I could make it 1M. I could do whatever I want, and then when I click this link, it's going to be updated with all of my new options. So then I can just take this, any part of this, and just copy and paste it and send it to my developers and say, hey, you know what? Here's the formatting that I want to apply to our toaster. And you can do that with anything you find on the web. If you see something that's really cool, then just check it out. Just use Chrome developer tools to find out how they did it. So for example, if I go to people.com, I don't normally go to these sites. I do it for our site. And I just did a full analysis of our celebrity content. And so some of these things are just kind of fresh in my mind. But let's say you wanted to mm -hmm. see how people.com did these icons. And I can tell they're using CSS because it's applied the same way to different images. So if I just right click on this and choose inspect element, then here's the CSS over here. And just as before, if I updated this, now it's no longer a circle, it's kind of oblong. Or I could change the height, I could change the font size, I could change anything in here. I did think it was kind of curious that I, I was wondering how they got this little icon here. And I'm going to press Command-Z to undo that. And I thought, is that actually a custom font? So to test it, I just made it bigger. And sure enough, that icon isn't an image. It's actually a font because when I increase the font size, it updates. So just as before, I could change this. I could update this, make it a little farther away. Update this one to match. And then say, OK. All right, I have all of my changes, and now I'm just going to go and grab this CSS. So there's your tip for the day. A little longer than usual, but it's a really good tip to use.